Well, hello and good afternoon. This is Pastor Jim uh, with our scripture devotion today from Jeremiah chapter 31. One of the, the great scriptures we have in the Old Testament, uh, just helping to fulfill God's plan to get all people back to him, beginning with, uh, with Abraham and Moses and to David. And then, you know, Jeremiah is going to going to bring us along with his really introduction of the notion of a new covenant, which will be different from the old covenant that God had made with Israel. And uh, you'll notice the background's a little different. I'm trying something new. What, what I'm doing is basically, in order to, to get a better picture from my live streams, I'm trying different computers to see if that's the issue. And if, uh, if that's the case, then um, maybe upgrade my laptop. If that's not the case, we'll work on the camera. Uh, I, I'm very low. I have very low technical skills, so I don't know how else to do it than to just try out different things. So um, you'll notice the, the background, and I'll just do a quick unprofessional pan of where I'm at, and you'll see in the sanctuary behind me. So I'm sitting at the tech booth, at our tech booth computer, one of our tech booths, and doing my stream from here. And so I will try this out. We'll see how it works. I, what I don't like is I have to keep moving my stuff. When I have it set up in my office, it's all set up there, and I don't have to move stuff because I don't like to move stuff. I like it organized and where it's at, and I don't have to move things around. So undoubtedly, I've probably forgotten something, although I have my Bible, and at the end of the day, that's all we really need. So a special uh, invitation for you to join us uh, worship tomorrow night at 6 p.m. in person or online, as well as worship on Sunday at 8:30 and 11:15. Bible study at 10. Uh, we're still we're still working out some of the glitches in the Bible study video as well. Uh, we have we still have that weird sound delay, um, and I'm trying to get someone who knows something about it, but. Uh, um, those, those people are very hard to find, and, and there's a reason why you pay professional people to set these things up for you instead of letting your knucklehead pastor try and figure things out. But together we will get through. So our reading today is from Jeremiah 31, uh, beginning at verse 31. So if you're following along in your Bibles, I invite you to join me. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for light by day, and the fixed order of the moon and the stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If this fixed order departs from before me, declares the Lord, then shall the offspring of Israel cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below can be explored, then I will cast off all the offspring of Israel for all that they have done, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. When the city shall be rebuilt for the Lord, from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate, and the measuring line shall go out farther, straight to the hill Gerub, and shall then go to Goa. The whole valley of the dead bodies and the ashes, and all the fields as far as the brook Kidron, to the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be sacred to the Lord. It shall not be uprooted or overthrown any more forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, um, both our, our, our Old Testament reading for this week and our gospel uh, 
um, from Mark have these great statements. I won't focus on our, I'll, I'll focus on the gospel statement for tomorrow. But, you know, this reading, uh, it, it sort of begins and ends with the prophet saying, Behold, the days are coming. Behold, the days are coming. Um, and so what Jeremiah is prophesying um, was not yet present in his day, which is kind of the definition of prophecy, right? Something that's going to happen. And, and what is it? I will make a new covenant. I will make a new covenant that God announced that at a time in the future, to Jeremiah's day, he would make a new covenant. And this new covenant would first be with Israel, but it would not be according to the covenant that God had made with Israel in the Sinai Desert with Moses. Now, throughout the Bible, um, God reveals his plan of redemption through a series of covenants. Uh, the first we get is in, in the book of Genesis, that, and it's the Abrahamic covenant, the covenant God made with Abraham. And that his, the covenant was that he would bless him with land, with a nation, and that he would bless the nations of the world, including the Gentiles. And then, so that's the first. The second is the Mosaic covenant or the Sinai covenant. That's God gave Israel the law and the sacrifices and gave them the choice of blessings or curses. And then there's the Davidic covenant and that where God promised through David an everlasting dynasty and a perfect ruler and the Messiah. And, and, and so in Jeremiah now, we get this introduction of, of a new covenant is coming. That, that God's plan of redemption through the covenants is completed and perfected in this new covenant. And the promise relates to a new covenant. And, and in a sense, it's, it's a radical change in God's dealing with humanity. Uh, it's it's uh, a radical change in God's economy with the world, if you will. And, of course, we know, far removed from Jeremiah's words uh, in 520-ish B.C., that Jesus instituted the new covenant by his death and on the cross. And then he specifically instituted the recognition and remembrance of it with the bread and the cup. This is my body this is my blood. This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. As often as you gather and drink from this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. And even the writer of the book of Hebrews, and I always say the writer of Hebrews, because some say it was Paul, others, but really nobody really knows who wrote Hebrews. But the author of Hebrews quotes this passage from Jeremiah, and he develops this theme of the new covenant especially in contrast to the old, how the new covenant is superior to the old covenant because it actually removes sin and it doesn't just cover it as the sacrificial system did. And then Jeremiah continues speaking for the Lord, my covenant which they broke, that a new covenant was promised and, and needed because Israel could not keep the covenant God had made with them at Sinai. Uh, this covenant was not designed to be enough. It was the preparation for the new covenant to come. And, and, and one of my favorite parts of this as well, you know, we're understanding the new covenant, of course, as, as, as receiving Christ, that Christ is the new covenant, that faith in him is the new covenant, that, that Jeremiah says that I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and write it on their hearts, that this new covenant brings about inner transformation. Um, that the law of God wasn't only, was no longer just external, but God would change the minds and the hearts of those connected to him by this new covenant. And, and of course, and, and, and the difference, of course, with this new covenant as well, is that obedience to the law is not a prior condition to the new covenant obedience and, and hear that clearly. God doesn't say, if you follow all these rules, I will enter into this new covenant with you. No, he enters into it while we were still sinners. So the law becomes a promised blessing of the new covenant, that we have this wonderful law to follow. Very important that we make that distinction. 
And that's one of the, of course, major differences between the new, the old covenant, that through the gospel, right, uh, God uh, gives everything uh, through the law, its requirement. And yet in the gospel, God grants us everything we need. And then in, in the end of verse 33, we read I, that God says, I will be their God and they shall be my people. And here's another sort of change with the representation of this new covenant. And it's focused on a personal, close relationship with God. And, you know, and, and it's this personal aspect that, that um, is distinctive between the new and the old covenant. That, that anyone... Anyone who in faith receives Christ is a member of the church of God and has a personal relationship with him. That through Christ we all have direct access to God. We don't need to go through a mediator. Every single person is able to, in Christ, approach the throne of God. Another big difference. And then in 34, uh, the, the culmination of all this um, the uh, expiation, if you will. We talked about expiation. That's the fancy word for the removal of sin or guilt via a sacrifice. That Christ is our expiation. And God says, I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. That the new covenant brings true cleansing from sin. Um, and not just a cover of sin, which was really reflective of the old covenant. That the new covenant doesn't envision sinfulness but the forgiveness of sin in restoration of the fellowship with God. And then in verse 35 on uh, we hear God using some some kind of extraordinary language to make a point and his point is this look I've created the earth I created the sun I created the day no one can measure the heavens no one can measure the depths of the earth and, you know, unless they're cast off, Israel will cease to be. And the point is they will never be cast off. It's the point is that Israel um, will always be the offspring of God. And, of course, spiritual Israel is a part that we're all connected to through Christ. And, and the last part of this, verses 38 on, is the talk of the restoration of a true Jerusalem. And it's very specific, and this is interesting because people have disagreed over the interpretation of this, that uh, verse 38 we read, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the city, Jerusalem, shall rebuilt, be rebuilt for the Lord from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate, and the measuring line shall go out farther straight to the hill Gerob and then to Goa, the whole valley of the dead bodies and ashes and all the fields as far as the brook of Kidron to the corner of the horse gate toward the east shall be sacred to the Lord. It shall not be plucked up or overthrown anymore forever. That's awfully specific. That's awfully specific for uh, Jerusalem to be just a spiritual Jerusalem. And of course, we get a little more interpretation of this in the book of Revelation when we read of the new Jerusalem descending from the heavens to uh, live forevermore. And, and just this last parting thought I want, I, want, I want to share with you that in part of this new covenant that God says that I'm going to write my law on, on your heart. You know, the law, of course, was on stone tablets, at least a portion of the law. And it was meant to be observed from a distance and obeyed. But now God says under this new covenant, I'm going to write my law on your hearts. And, and think of it this way, that your heart and my heart is, is God's papyrus. It's, it's his parchment paper. And when we open ourselves up to the possibilities of God, we, we permit God to write his law upon our hearts. And make no mistake, we have the ability to shut our hearts off, to, in a sense, harden our hearts to the Lord. And yet, uh, what, what better time than now when many of us are focusing on issues related to the pandemic and as things are starting to open, um, we're seeing a lot of fear in people, which is absolutely understandable. Um, I, I still, for my own self, you know, we've been under pandemic conditions for, well, a year, a little over a year, if you will, depending on, on your situation. And, you know, we're, when, when you do encounter um, people who are just now getting out, give them a modicum of, of, of grace, right? 
Uh, we're all fearful of different things. And, you know, the only way this sounds campy and cheesy, but, you know, we are in this together in the sense that we're walking forward. Each of our situations may be different, but uh, um, just this, this thought. Allow God to write his law upon your heart. Not in order that you can be saved, because Christ has already done that work for you, but so that you and I can be the best disciples that we can be, furthering his kingdom until that day comes and we see the Lord in the air. Amen. Well, uh, the song that I chose for this afternoon is Alas and Did My Savior Bleed, written by Isaac Watts in the early part of the 17th century and and I think you've heard me say this Isaac Watts is one of the most prolific hymn writers we have it was estimated I read somewhere that he he wrote perhaps over 4,000 hymns 4,000 hymns are you kidding me um, I haven't written any although I'm working on one now as my I struggle along with my piano lessons um, I, I, I'm writing a song uh, based on that idea of our hearts are God's uh, parchment, his papyrus, his, his writing instrument. And so when that comes out, I'll let you know. Alas, and did my Savior be. Alas, and did my Savior be. And did my sovereign That sacred head for such a one as I was it for Christ that I had done. He groaned upon the tree. In darkness hide and shut his glories in. When God the mighty maker died for his own creature's sin, the spite I hide. My blushing face while his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt my nights to tears. A drops of grief can The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Be glad and, and blessed to have the Lord write uh, upon your heart. Receive the Lord's blessing. Be a blessing to others. I love you guys and I will see you all very soon. God bless.